why I have the progress flag in my classroom on today's ThinkShare. Hello and welcome to ThinkShare. My name is Zach, who brings you up and thinking about, sharing about, talking about, listening to, reading about that doesn't belong in math class. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe. I suppose my tagline there about doesn't belong in math class, it's more about the content of what is being taught in math class explicitly. So the reason that I have this flag in class is because I recognize that we still live in a society that does not necessarily see um, people in the LGBTQIA community as equal. I recognize, um, you know, Recently watching the show Pose on Netflix, really good. I recommend people check it out. Um, you know, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time with a lot of people that are in the LGBTQIA community. And sometimes it's easy to forget how much crap they have to deal with, um, how much progress has been required for them to have the social acceptance and the civil rights that they deserve as human beings, as Americans with un unalienable rights. One of the early reasons that I had a pride flag in my classroom before I got the progress flag was because I took a class in my master's for, for my teaching license that talked about different um, racial groups, different uh, communities that are judged that deal with prejudice. And one of those communities was the LGBTQIA community. And I think I understood after that class and after talking to some, some gay friends that the most powerful thing I can do, like I can have a speech at the beginning of the year about not using the some of the words that are going to show up in the comments on this video probably. Um, but that doesn't necessarily that doesn't necessarily say a lot because you could apply that to any insult. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're standing with those people and that they can feel comfortable and trusted and not judged. So I think having a symbol in your class that you're with them, like you're there for them, that they can be who they are, that they don't have to feel like they're being judged by the person that is running the classroom, I think is a really powerful symbol. And I know that um, my friend that I had talked to at the time, he said like back when he was growing up in the 80s, um, you know, he didn't have celebrities, he didn't have symbols uh, around him that told him like, who you are is okay and you're accepted here. Um, so I've evolved the flag that I have in my classroom from this, uh, or from the pride flag to this, um, partially because I've wanted to have a trans pride flag in the classroom. People are discovering that people that identify as trans um, deserve just as much respect uh, for who they are and to not have to feel judged for it. I think seeing all of the hate, seeing all of the really angry and upset people for no good reason are the reason that I really want to stand with them. There are so many people that feel the need to put in their two cents about who they are. And it's just super unnecessary. And I think it's hard. I would imagine being a trans person, it's really hard to find places where you can feel safe at home and loved um, and accepted for who you are in any given place in the country, in the world. So having this in my classroom, I would hope and think that trans people can feel more comfortable. And um, looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we can, I mean, we can say this about any of the people represented from this progress flag, is that if you are feeling fear, if you're not feeling comfort, um, if you're not feeling love or acceptance, it's gonna be really hard to learn anything academically because your emotional needs aren't being met. Um, and I think that's what we see a lot in special education is I am a special education math teacher. Um, a lot of the students that I work with, um, you know, they might need 
they need small group settings. Uh, it can be really anxiety provoking to be in large classrooms. And I know there have been a large handful of people, students that have met over the years that have gone through experiences and seen prejudice that really needs to be alleviated before they can feel comfortable enough in a classroom to learn. It's hard enough even when you know they have a new face in front of them that they need to get used to, um, but to know that they're accepted, I think is another huge step. Um, the other part is the black and brown stripe through it, which um, really just represents that I am creating, showing a symbol um, that I stand with the Black Lives Matter movement. There are different sort of meanings behind that. That's how I see it. That's how I sort of describe it, is the black and brown stripes. Um, you know, I stand with Black Lives Matter. I stand by that statement. I know that the organization has received a lot of criticism for some of the actions that have occurred after peaceful protests, which I don't necessarily see that they are responsible for. I think that that would be the, the people that are for the police officers in this country saying like, there's just a few bad apples. You can use that exact same strategy, that same talking point or logic for the Black Lives Matter movement. It really doesn't take a whole lot of human beings to make places look burnt up and looted um, for, for the whole entire organization to be judged. It takes the 0.01% of people that show up to those uh, gatherings to cause that kind of mayhem. It really doesn't take too many people to accomplish those things. I think it's an inappropriate representation of what the Black Lives Matter movement is and what it stands for. The Black Lives Matter movement to me really is just pointing out that in this country, white lives clearly matter. You can see in a lot of examples where White people are given privileges that a lot of black people are not. I'm not gonna go further into the Black Lives Matter movement because I've talked about it in other videos. I have a lot of information to share. Feel free to let me know in the comments what your issues are with me about this. Um, but I know that I am serving my population of students very well by having this flag in here, by allowing them to feel represented, by allowing them to feel safe, um, you know, it is a high school, so this is a perfectly appropriate topic to be bringing up in a high school. And I think it's important that they see that the people teaching them respect and um, give equal rights to all people, no matter what their orientation is, what their skin color is, what their gender is, etc. It just they all deserve equal rights. And I think my students need to know that, that I support that. And that's important to me that they understand that about me. The last point that I wanna bring up is that a lot of people say that this is a political statement to have in class. The reason I disagree with this really being a political statement is the fact that if you look at say Martin Luther King, who we see in classrooms today, and no one's protesting, no one's having a problem really with Martin Luther King being in, say, a history class or even a math class for that matter. Back in the 50s and 60s, maybe even 70s, he would have been a very um, politicized, that would be a very political statement to have a Martin Luther King poster in your classroom. So for 50 years to go by or 60 years to go by, and now it's normal, it's really just, it was never political, it was about civil rights and it's on the right side of history. This is the same thing. It, some people might feel like it's political right now and it's just because the laws haven't caught up with how things should be, how they ought to be. Um, like schools should have never been segregated and they were and it was a policy, political issue at the time. That doesn't mean that it ever should have been and it should have never been political. But it was the time just because the policies hadn't caught up to how things were and how they should have been. And that really is what it is now. It's not that there's any problem with this, it's that people find it political because policies haven't caught up to reality. So 
you can chew on that if you are a hater and feel free to leave me comments. I'm, I know you will. I can't wait for them. I'm totally looking forward to them. I'm going to try not to spend too much time in the comments section. Um, I've learned to not pull my hair out, but laugh more at the people that are going to say really horrible things in the comments. So for all of those of you that are watching up until now, we're almost 10 minutes in here or 11 minutes in. Uh, thank you for watching. I very much appreciate you listening to me. Uh, I look forward, I'll probably do a follow-up video for all the things that are being said about this. And I look forward to responding to those comments. If you like this, give it a like. If you would love to see a teacher that you know having a flag like this in your classroom, send this video to them. Share, share just the general idea. I have another video talk that explicitly talks more about how to talk with your teacher about possibly having a flag in the classroom, um, especially if you feel really uncomfortable about that possibility. And you know, I think it would. If you can have that conversation with your teacher and get, make that happen, you'll probably, the discomfort you might go through to make that happen will probably give comfort to someone that is absolutely voiceless. So I encourage you to have the courage to talk to your teachers, talk to your administrators about having flags like this in the classrooms, in the schools that you reside in. Thank you again. If you like this, give it a like. If you dislike this, give it a dislike. Let me know in the comments about it. Thank you for watching. As always, stay weird, humans.